Hello, welcome to this service for St Nicholas Church on Sunday the 21st of June. Uh, this would have been a parade service for Father's Day, but of course we cannot meet together. But I'm very pleased that members of our Scouts G46 have recorded some videos uh, for us and we look forward to hearing from them uh, a little bit uh, later. So slightly different format today, uh, more uh, video content, um, but uh, hopefully this will all come together well and it will be a good time uh, to think and uh, to reflect and to worship, uh, not just as we uh, think of it being in lockdown, but also as we look forward to being together once again. Well, thank you for joining us and a moment of quiet now and then the prayers of penitence. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the story of the prodigal son from the Jesus Story Book Bible by Sally Lloyd Jones. And Jesus told this story about a boy who ran away. Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now one day the boy gets to thinking, maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what's good for me all the time, I'd be happier. He's spoiling my fun, he thinks. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does my dad really love me? The son never thought of that before, but suddenly he doesn't know anymore. So the son goes to his father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. I can look after myself. Just give me my share of your money. His father is sad, but he won't force his boy to stay, so he gives his son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on a long, long journey to a far off country. And everything's wonderful and perfect for a while. He can go wherever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. Be whoever he wants. He's the boss. He's free. Sometimes he gets a strange, hungry, homesick feeling inside. But then he just eats more, or drinks more, or buys more clothes, or goes to more parties, until it goes away. But soon his money runs out, and so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can, feeding pigs. One day he's so hungry and so desperate, he even tries some of the pig food. What am I doing? He says suddenly, as if he's walking from a nightmare. He spits all of it out of his mouth. My father's rich and here I am, in a pigsty, eating pig food. He wipes his mouth, dusts himself off. I'm going home, he decides. As he starts for home though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore, I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. So he practices his I'm sorry speech. All this time, he doesn't know that day after day, his dad has been standing on his porch, straining his eyes, looking into the distance, waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. 
He longs for the sound of his boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The sun is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Fold his arms and frowns, shout, that'll teach you, and just you wait, young man. No, that's not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch, races down the hill, through the gap in the hedge, up the road, before a son can even begin his I'm sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms around him, and can't stop kissing him. Let's have a party, his dad shouts. My boy's home. He ran away. I lost him. But now, I have him back. I love my dad because he cooks us barbecues, he takes us on cycling trips and we both like cars. I'm grateful for my dad for always being my personal taxi service, picking me up when I'm out with my friends um, late at night and even taking my friends home without complaining about it. I'm thankful for my dad for everything he does for me and for always being there and looking after me when I need it and always being the one person in my life who's reliable. I'm grateful for my granddad for always getting excited over everything I achieve and always supporting me in everything I do. I'm thankful for my granddad for being the most amazing man in my life and for always being there and supporting me and even now still coming to watch me at church parade. I once went to the optician, this was when I was uh, still uh, at school and living in Belfast. I was 60 or 17 rather or 18 years old and had quite recently passed the driving test. It turned out the optician had a son of a similar age to me and in the course of things, in the course of how my eyes tested, she was saying uh, how when her son had passed the driving test, she had bought him a car, brand new car, uh, if you please, and a top, end, top of the uh, range high performance model at that. Then she went on to say that within a matter of weeks, he had ripped the car off. Then, she said, she had replaced the car straight away with a similar, maybe even slightly better model. You know, when you're 18, lots of thoughts go through your heads, like, well, what a waste of money, or that's just good money after bad, or is he just showing off, or I wish my parents were opticians, or maybe I should become an optician. Anyway, it sounded like reckless extravagance, and maybe it was. You know, there are two definitions of prodigal, following on from the prodigal son story that we've listened to. And the two definitions are recklessly extravagant, that's the first one, and the other one is having spent everything. Recklessly extravagant and having spent everything. This story is known as the prodigal son because we focus in on one character and on one definition. The son in the story does treat his father very badly. The money that he wanted and that he got, strictly speaking, would have been his only after his father had died. In the event, things at first seemed to go well for the son, and it suited him just fine to be recklessly extravagant. That was until he had spent everything. Then he was the prodigal son by both definitions. At that point, he was forced to stop and think. He had a couple of options, I guess. Uh, he could stay where he was, unloved, far from home and living in squalor. Or he could go back home, apologise and ask to be taken back in again by his father. He chose the second option. For all his determination to go his own way, he knew his father well enough and he was willing to be humble enough to go back to him. Of course, he got a speech ready. He knew he needed to say sorry. 
He was well aware of what he had done wrong. And he wanted his place back in the family if they would have it. Or so he thought. That at least is how he saw the problem. Well, the story unfolds rather differently than expected. What we heard was that while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Day after day, the father had been looking out for him, waiting for him to return home. So when he did, the father was ready to welcome him back. And there's a burst of excitement. He's back. He was lost, but now he is found. So he must have a party to celebrate his return. So who was the recklessly extravagant one now? You know, as we were reminded in the story, the father did not say, that will teach you a lesson, just you wait. Where has all my money gone? What did you spend it on? He didn't say that, far from it. What the father did was very costly. He did not ask for his money back. He did not reckon or count his, uh, the, the son's sin against him. The father bore the cost of it himself, not just the financial cost, but the emotional cost, the cost of forgiveness, the cost of the hurt that had been done to him. The local community probably thought he'd taken leave of his senses. They may well have looked on and thought, how can he do that? Look at what his son did to him. And to make matters worse, he spent a whole load more money having a huge party. You see, that was the prodigal father. He was the one who was recklessly extravagant for the sake of his son. Not just because he loved him and he had returned safely, but because his son owed him so much. That was the shock to everyone who heard this story. You know, this is a picture of our Heavenly Father. He is the God of great expenditure, of reckless extravagance. He is the God who spends all he has for us. You know, that's where our hope lies, in the grace of God, in his extravagant expenditure for us. The only way we can approach God is as people with an unpayable debt. People who are willing to um, search our own hearts and say sorry to God. We come asking for mercy, for forgiveness. When we do that, we will find that God is waiting for us. That our debts, great as they are, have been paid for us. We will meet the recklessly extravagant God for whom no price is too great. He gave his own life for us in Christ. Jesus told the story to show us what God is like, to show us what we are like. This story tells us that however far we run, however well we hide, however lost we are, it does not matter. God can and he will. So we now say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear God, Thank you for our families, especially today, thinking of our fathers. We pray for our special family, G46 Scout Group, its leaders and all members of our group, especially now as we try to keep together through our Zoom meetings. We thank our fathers who work hard to take care of us. Although they may not always be there, we know that they continue to support us in all they do. We think of those who don't have the love of a father in their lives. We hope that they have some father figure to look up to for support and guidance. In these strange times, we ask for you to take care of our families and hope that soon we can be together again. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.